Zeph on your Twitch channel, yeah? Uh, yeah, on Twitch. And we're live. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hope there's people here. I don't know if there's anyone here. It is streaming. Hooray. Hooray. Did you uh, advertise the fact? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been uh, advertising a lot today. <laughs> Seems to be a big hype. Yeah. Even though there was a stream yesterday about this. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I don't think some uh, people can't catch it when it's playing, so you know. Yeah, well, and the great thing about Twitch is it's got the uh, the auto, um, the auto, uh, what you call it, export to YouTube. So. Oh, okay. Cool. But there is people in chat. Hello, everyone. You know me, Zeph Films. Hello. And I'm here I'm with. Waiting at the cameras that aren't doing anything. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this and, is uh, all official now. All right, three, two, one, official. All right, take two. <laughs> Okay, so hello, I'm Zeph Films, and I'm joined uh, gracefully uh, by uh, with Nick uh, Dugid, the senior environment artist over at Star Trek Online Cryptic. What's up, Nick? Hello. And uh, thank you. Called me baseball before. Really? I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> well, you're you're a busy man. You took. I'm sure you got to. Do you have to go back to work after this or no? Yeah. Yeah. Really? We still have some stuff to do. So oh. That's fine. Oh, I'll try not to keep you for too long. <laughs> um, you hear that, uh, everyone? Zeph is keeping me from finishing DS9. Oh, it's geez. all his fault. Yeah, all my fault. <laughs> Just blame Zeph. <laughs> no. uh, there, there's some people who actually... You remember when the Enterprise J came out and I put yeah. that video out with uh, the rock and roll animation? <laughs> and then the next day it was gone? <laughs> yeah, people, oh. people blame me for that. Because, oh. yeah little bit of a coincidence <laughs> i do a video and then it's taken away yeah <laughs> but uh you've so um before we start talking about ds9 we're actually so um you put out some information about a sitting spot for uh nog and jake <laughs> and we're actually in it right now right i was gonna keep it a secret but somebody actually like asked straight up if i forget what they said but they said something about the spot and it would be really cool if there was a way to sit there and i had literally you know yesterday put in that exact thing so i took the the chair nodes that we have or the the sit nodes that we put on all the chairs and i just took them off of some of the chairs and put them down where we're sitting right now so it's not on triple yet but uh when it is if you know the secret spot where jake and and nog used to hang out um there's a interact there and you can come over and and interact on that and two people can sit side by side in that spot and nowhere else you know so. what I can't wait for this to uh, go live on Holodeck. I'm just going to sit there and watch everybody fight for the spot. <laughs> That's the real reason yeah, you why you have, did it, right? There's only two spots, so you guys are going to have to share and, uh, you know. Yeah, you create a separate queue. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm just going to ask a couple of questions about you, just in case people are sure. newer to the game and don't know who you are, uh, because you yeah. are a person and not just a developer. Uh, but you've been at Cryptic for eight years, correct? No, no I've longer. Been cryptic for I will hit, hit thirteen years next week. Wow, April twenty sixth will be thirteen years at Cryptic. Oh, that's right. Because before STO, you were yeah. City City of Heroes, right? I started on City of Villains. Oh, um, City of Heroes was already out, and they were they were working on City of Villains, and I started. And the first thing that I did was um, I was responsible for all of the trash and graffiti around Bloody Bay anybody played city of villains i was the one who put all of the you know papers and and graffiti and uh cardboard boxes and dumpsters and all that around bloody bay to try and make it look a little bit more villainous and run down so yeah uh and then let's see so then <laughs> i bounced around on a bunch of different projects um some of which never saw the light of day so from champs I went to um, a project called uh, Lost Worlds, which was going to be some kind of like dinosaur writing thing mm. that never went anywhere. And then um, we had started working on Champs by that point. So then I had worked on Champs for a while. And then I worked on another side project that didn't go anywhere. And then I went, went back to Champs. And then I went back to another side project and then back to Champs. And then at some point, um, in 2012, January 2012, I think, I, I moved over to Stowe, and I've been here since. So. Wow. 
That's that's quite a career journey for you there, eh? <laughs> well, all in one studio, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's that's insane. So that's wow. <laughs> I've had a hand in most projects that Cryptic has, has worked on, whether they've been out the door or not. Um, I did a little bit on, on Neverwinter here and there, but not much. Um, yeah. So you, you are definitely the Cryptic veteran there. Well, no, there's people who've been here longer than me. Really? Uh, I've, I've actually got a list. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> not, not that I'm counting down, but because um, at some point I was just trying to remember, like, who all was here when I started? And, you know, this was years ago that I started this list. And I so I made a list of everybody that was here, you know, when I had started at Cryptic. And then I was like, OK, well, who's who's left? And so I you know, kind of inadvertently started this this countdown list of who's left at Cryptic that's been here longer than me. And I think it's down to seven or eight people. Um, Gecko is one of them, Al, yeah. um, and then a number of other people. Ian Castaneda, who is a, one of our uh, character artists on Stowe. Oh, yeah. He actually trained me. He was my, my buddy when I started. So, yeah. Wow. Now, in in those 12, 13 years with Cryptic, have you always been known as Taco Fangs or Tummer Boy? <laughs> um, so Tumor Boy goes back to high school, really. Um, Tumor Boy was my AOL uh, name, my, my AOL 2.0. Oh, yeah. When I was you know, 16 or something, I signed up for AOL, and um, I had had a brain tumor when I was 10. Oh. And my a friend of mine in high school you know, was just joking, like, jokingly calling, calling me Tumor Boy at, at school. And so when I signed up for AOL, I didn't know what to call myself, just like everybody. And so you pick a screen name, and I went with Tumor Boy. And, of course, Tumor Boy, even then, in 1996, was taken. So I had to misspell it to be Tumor Boy. Hmm. And uh, that's been kind of just, you know, what I've run with ever since. Um, and when we were – I think it was when we were doing Champions – I can't remember. It must have been champions. Um, we we started the forums, and so I signed up on the forums, uh, just not trying to be a dev, but just as my own account, so that I could just watch things and read things. And I signed up as Tumor Boy because that's what I, you know, what I was, and nobody knew me as that. Um, but somebody, you know, one of the NetOps people or somebody, you know, who knew me as that flagged my account as a dev account and then then i was tumor boy officially and everybody got to know me as that on champions and and then years later i mean i was tumor boy for a long time on on the champions forums and in a couple other places officially and then um at some point after perfect world took over uh from atari the <laughs> i got word from somebody up at perfect world that uh, Tumor Boy was offensive, and so I needed to change my name. And so I had already been kind of joking about Taco Fangs, and I actually was using the Taco Fangs uh, avatar image or whatever on the forums as my as my I image. Mm -hmm. And so I just went, I changed it to that, and it's been Taco Fangs since, really, other than Reddit and a few places where I'm still Tumor Boy just because that's legacy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, once Twitter, it's, it's set in stone there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I always... Do you, know, do you know the story of Taco Fangs? Do you know where that comes from, too? No, no. I'm actually... Oh, okay. I'm interested in that, too. So Taco Fangs is a Champions thing um, and stems from Champions. So on the Champions forums, uh, people one day were discussing uh, an in-game villain named Tacophanes, T-A-K-O-P-H-A-N-E-S, I think, Tacophanes, mm -hmm. and he's an ancient Egyptian god or something, I, forgive me, champions folks, I, I've forgotten, it's been a while, um, and he's, you know, kind of a mummy dude or whatever, and he's a, you know, big, big villain, and, but nobody ever knows how to, how to say his name, and so even on the champion's uh, team, people didn't know how to say his name, and so we used to joke and just call him Taco Face or Taco Fangs. And so when players were asking how to pronounce his name, I got on the Champions forums and I was like, "Well, here's you know, we used to call him Taco Face or Taco Fangs, but really it's pronounced Tacophanies." And so I did, you know, stupid forum things, right? You go to Google Image Search and you find the first taco image you can, and you draw a little face on it with some fangs, and you post it, and that's what I did. 
And <laughs> people thought that was hilarious. And so I made that my avatar and then that's where it all kind of came from. So it's a, it's a champions reference actually. You know what? I have not been disappointed with the origins of username story yet from the developers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's awesome. <laughs> I can only imagine what uh Salami's uh origin story is, but I think that's a that's a conversation for a different day. Uh, yeah, I, well I, I can tell I mean I can tell you how it relates, but I honestly don't know if that's the origin or not. But he he actually makes sausage. He he makes salamis and stuff. He really grinds up meat and and makes his own. And um, I haven't actually had it, but a bunch, bunch of people on the team have, and they all say it's great. So um, I don't know if that's how it started or if that's like a side effect of it, him having that name or what. But uh, yeah, he's he's the sausage man at at work. <laughs> that sounds really bad. <laughs> delete that. See, this is editing, right? We're not live or anything. We can just delete that. Oh, and then, yeah, uh, we yeah. Say whatever. <laughs> Let me know if he pokes oh, his head in and gives you yeah, a glare. I'm on the opposite side of the building and, and nobody can hear me, so. Oh, awesome. Unless they're watching the stream secretly. Unless it's, yeah. I, <laughs> I have a feeling he's not right now. Yeah, too busy. <laughs> so uh, when you're not being a uh, developer, what is uh, what are some things that you would do in, like, your free time? Uh, let's see. Free time. That's been a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm a gamer. I, I'm a Star Trek nerd or, uh, you know, nerd in general. So, uh, I enjoy watching various, uh, you know, modern nerd TV kind of things. Uh, I certainly play lots of video games. Um, I play board games with friends sometimes. I, uh, do some woodworking here and there. Um, I, collect and shoot guns. Uh, I don't know. I volunteer with a couple of different organizations. Stuff. I saw one. You volunteer with uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation? Yep. Yeah. That's yep. that's actually a really, a really cool thing. I've, I've seen some of the stories that go behind it. I'm guessing that is, is that something that you've been involved with for a while? Well, I mean on the other side of it yeah so so where the brain tumor came in you know tumor boy and all that i had a brain tumor when i was 10 mm -hmm. and i was a wish kid um i got a computer in 1992 which was a much bigger deal then yeah um and uh and so i was a wish kid then and as an adult i just figured it would be fun to be on the other side of that and it has been so I've, i'm what they call a wish granter and i go around and and interview kids to find out what they want and then deliver their wishes to them, which is a lot of fun. You don't have to do any of the hard part. Oh, nice. Now, I got to ask, what has been the the um, the most exciting uh, gift that you've delivered? Um, we don't get to usually, like, usually it's people want to go to Disney World or whatever. You know, they're, they're kids and they, they like kid things, mm -hmm. you know, the way that you would expect. Um We've gotten a couple that have been, you know, the ones that are more oddball are tend to be more fun. So I had a 17-year-old had a girl a couple years ago who wanted to visit the set of The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And so we don't we don't get to go on that with her or anything. So we don't get to, you know, to see The Walking Dead at all. Um, but uh, we get to do what we call a wish delivery. And we'll, we'll announce basically that she's gotten her wish and that we're going to send her to, to see The Walking Dead. And... Uh, most of the time for most wishes, that's just a little party at home. We'll come over with some cake and some balloons or something and say, hey, you got your wish and, you know, you're going to Disney World or whatever. Um, but this happened to line up where um, Paige got her wish uh, granted right around Halloween um, a couple of years ago, last year, maybe a few years ago. And um, a big theme park around here uh, called Great America does a giant Halloween haunt every year. And it turns out that other Make-A-Wish volunteers actually work at the haunt. And so we were able to get her uh, family, her her mom, to say that they were just going to go visit the haunt. And then we were able to kind of uh, flash mob her in, in with zombies. So we had her surrounded by uh, zombies that all just kind of rushed in. And then they revealed that she was going to visit the Walking Dead, which was pretty neat. So wow, that was a lot of fun. That that's that's amazing. I I like those kind of stories. Those are the uh, the stories where you get to give back and get involved. And those are yeah yeah those are. I, I have a friend. Uh, she had a um, a kidney transplant about eighteen years ago, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she was uh, she was at Sick Kids uh, Toronto Hospital. Um, mm-hmm. Went through, and she was on the uh, Make a Wish Foundation. She actually got a computer as well. Oh uh, yeah, I think cool. it was a Dell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, now it's uh, whenever we try to uh, like. Um, I used to be part of before my Star Trek life of doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to be big into car scenes, so we do okay. um, the car meets and. Uh, one big thing that Sick Kids Hospital always wanted was uh, DVDs, uh, new uh-huh. new DVDs, because yeah, kids absolutely. always need something to watch. They so uh, I think uh, in a couple of days we had raised about something like three hundred dollars just to go out and buy DVDs. It was that's awesome. I, I really like that, and I really do yeah. appreciate people who do that uh, type of stuff as well. So yeah. that's that's really awesome. We we did a. Um... I was part of another wish, which I wasn't actually on the the wish team. Generally, there's two uh, wish granters assigned to to a kid, and uh, this kid named Ayad was uh, he his wish was to meet John Cena, the wrestler, and they were he was going to meet him at the uh, SAP Center, which is right downtown San Jose here, which is real close by. But his wish team wasn't able to make it that day, and so they asked for volunteers to you know basically escort him. Uh, to meet John Cena and so I volunteered and that was a blast Um, I you know not that I got to really talk to John Cena or anything but I was there when Ayad got to to meet him and then so we went backstage and we talked to a couple people and uh, another wrestler I think her name is Dana Brooke she was super nice and hung out with us and talked with the the family for a long time beforehand and then um, and then we got to see the show of course and so Ayad is you know right up front and we watch the show and it gets to John Cena's, you know, turn, I don't know wrestling, so forgive me wrestling fans, but you know, his turn to wrestle his match or whatever. And he gets done with his match. He wins and he immediately ducks out of the the ring and heads straight over to Ayad and like talks to him for a bit in, you know, on camera and all of that. And so that was actually, it was really cool because that actually, that clip went uh, pretty big on Reddit. It was on Reddit's front page for a while. And so there's a bunch of, yeah, that was that was that was the kid that I was escorting to to meet John that day. It was great. Holy was crap! A lot of fun. Wow. So we got a lot of publicity out of that, and then I jumped into that Reddit uh, thread and you know said you know what was actually going on and what had happened, and we got a bunch of people uh, actually volunteer for Make a Wish out of that thread, which was great. So uh, it's always cool when when stuff like that happens. Wow. And it's not often it does, but you know once in a while you get something something pretty neat yeah but at the end of the day it's all about the uh um the person receiving the wish and... yeah absolutely and i Ayad had a great time man he was he was covered head and toe, head to toe in john cena gear even be, before we showed up we took him and his family to the uh the the like gift stand or whatever uh after the show to see if there was anything that he wanted and like there was almost nothing that he didn't have already so <laughs> uh he was he was pretty well set and he had a good time that's awesome. Wow. That's... Brings a tear to my eye. Yeah. <laughs> John Cena, though. That's never saw him coming. <laughs> so Yeah, uh... there's so much so much of that, like, you know, you can't see me. And so people were, were joking about how Ayad can't see him. But, like, the whole thing is about somebody not being cool enough to see him. I'm pretty sure Ayad is cool enough to see John Cena. So I don't think that he, he's, uh, you know, phased by the yeah. I can't see him see him stuff. Anyway, yeah, I'm getting a couple or I got somebody in chat going. His name is John Cena. I'm not even going to try <laughs> recreating that scene. So uh, you got the mariachi horns going. And... No, I, I left those at work. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you have uh, just a couple more before we dive into the DS9 sure. stuff? Um, most memorable moment for you in uh, Star Trek Online, whether it be something. Um, oh, man. It could be uh, anything, mm-hmm. something you've done, something a fan has given you, um, anything. I don't think fans have given me anything, and now that's going to be super bad if somebody did and I don't remember it. Um, I, I mean, ESD revamp was, I mean, before DS9, like, that was the thing that I was lobbying for and, and wanted to do for a very long time, and I never thought it would get done, but then it got done, and that was a lot of fun, and it was really cool to work with everybody on one 
one big project. Um, DS9 has been that way now for a, a long time. Uh, yeah, I, you know, various STLVs, meeting fans at, at, at Star Trek Las Vegas. Um, that's always fun, you know, meeting the celebrities for the first time. You know, the, the <laughs> we met Denise Crosby and she took a, took us out to dinner at uh, some sushi restaurant at the Hard Rock Cafe at, at STLV. And being at dinner with her and a bunch of other devs was pretty surreal. Hmm. Um, and she was getting everybody drunk on sake. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of moments. I don't know that one is necessarily more memorable than the other. But, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I remember um, when ESD was uh, released. Um, I remember, act funny enough, that's actually the very first video I ever put on my YouTube channel was oh, yeah? me on Tribble uh, just running around looking at everything. And it was even before uh, Club uh, 47 was put in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that took a while. And <laughs> I remember just being in awe of the remodel. I'm just like, holy crap! And then that's when I found out that you had a huge hand in that. And um, and then I'd just be like, oh my God, like I need to talk to this guy. I'd be like, yo, like how how in the world like do you even come up with this? And like, what's the process? But we're gonna do that today <laughs> with uh, DS9. Well, uh, DS9 is a much different process because it's all canon. Uh, ESD is very different because it was all made up um, by us. I mean, so, so they're, they're very different processes, even though they're both big projects like that. Yeah. So would you say, so is it safe to say that ESD was uh, more complicated than DS9 to do? No. Oh, no. <laughs> DS9, DS9 has been a much bigger uh, thing to wrangle. Uh, and the majority, the biggest reason for that. Uh, is that Starfleet stuff? Um, you know, we've we've done we've done like the TNG interior and the Voyager interior in the past too, which were all both canon things. But Starfleet interiors, by and large, reuse the same wall over and over again. You know, they take one piece and they just copy it. Mm -hmm. And DS9, every corner is different. I mean, you know, the doors are are reused a couple of times, but there's you know, six or eight different doors, right? And, uh, you know, and every wall is a different angle and goes in a different direction. And every piece has to be a, another little separate thing. And there's just so many moving parts, not moving parts, but, you know, so many individual parts to ES9 compared to ESD. ESD, we could do really cover really big areas in, you know, single materials because it, it can be a lot more simple and sleek and refined. The way that Starfleet is, mm -hmm. um, whereas Cardassian stuff is nuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember there was a couple of references in the DS9 show where they said that uh, uh, Cardassian architecture is very uh, complicated and unique, and so yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, and it's really hard. It's one thing when you're looking at a you know a relatively square room to figure out how big it is or how far away one point is from another, but when you're looking at something like the like the infirmary like that the shape of that room is insane and trying to deduce its shape and size from screenshots is crazy <laughs> it's well, really hard where is is the infirmary is on tribble isn't it yeah you want to go yeah let's go let's jump down okay it's actually not that far of a drop anymore <laughs> nope that's not right over here with the blue lights and i just made the signs for it uh on the side that were were up on the corners here but this is just a bunch of circles <laughs> trying to figure out how all of this tied together uh was kind of a pain in the butt uh we have uh the the overhead drawings of the sets and so we use that as a guideline but there's a lot of finesse that still has to be done done to make it all work out uh into actual assets and so so there's a lot of work just getting this room to not be wonky yeah like already it feels like i'm like in the show everything is just so accurate like the l cars like that's all tim davies uh suricata he did a great job on all the l car stuff he's still been helping us with more of it um and that saved our butts because that's a lot of time for 
environment artists who are not necessarily graphic designers and aren't good in uh, in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. Often that job in the past has fallen to Thomas, but Thomas is in charge of both UI and ships at the moment, and so has basically zero bandwidth to take care of any of it. And and uh, Tim has stepped up greatly and um, done us a huge favor by by doing all this work for that for the Elcar stuff. I um, mean, he's 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 got it all, and it all looks correct. And we went back and forth on a few of them to make sure colors were were, were right and uh, brightnesses were right and all that. But uh, yeah. The brightness actually feels spot on from what I can remember in the show. Cool. We're we're still tweaking it a little bit. Yeah. It's not done yet, but um, but we're trying to get there. <laughs> I, I remember. I and I don't know if this is maybe just because I have a crappy like my my TV that I watch my shows on is uh, is old, um, mm -hmm. a lot older than I thought it was, uh, like eight years old. So, but DS Nine always kind of had like even in the bright area. Like, like, medical areas you think medical you think like bright white but mm -hmm. i think back to ds9 and the medical scenes and it was always kind of a i don't know if i'm using the right words but like a dull white or a dull yeah. type of brightness yeah. and i get that feeling here the, the the infirmary is certainly like one of the brightest rooms in ds9 and if you come out in the hallway what i when i look down the hallway on the show or the corridor or whatever um, it reminds me a lot of Las Vegas, of casinos, where there are lights fricking everywhere. There is a little light on every surface, you know, covering everything. And yet somehow it still manages to be dark, despite there being lights everywhere. And so I think that DS9 is, is similar. If you look, I mean, there's just points of light everywhere, but none of them are very bright to the point of, of illuminating the rest of the, the area around them very much. And so it all feels kind of dark anyway. Um, so we're, we've been working a lot to try and get that feel right and make sure that we we not not just get that feel on the this front half uh, that we saw on the show, but also replicate it on the backside too. Yeah. No, I just um, I think the very first so I did my demo record uh, trickery in the uh, the featured episode, and the first thing I noticed were these panels, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. holy crap! And then that's why I, I had to do the old versus new. Uh, mm -hmm. And I do that when Thomas, like, remakes a ship. I'm like, I have to do old versus new just right. to show the differences. And the panels were just like, oh, my God, like, God damn, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's, for me, I, I look at the the small details, and that's why I do those cinematic videos that I do is mm -hmm. to show the small details that go into these things. And right. um, one thing that was brought to my attention that I actually didn't know is the directory that's in the promenade. Yep, is it is that true that that is actually like a clone of the directory from the show? I I mean this the image that we have on here yeah is um is scans uh from the um it's not the DS9 tech manual there's a separate book a DS9 like making of book that I have that has uh five of the six scans and so we scanned those out to, to make this and I think we just used the Cardassian one is the one that's missing and so we we pulled that from from somewhere else I'm not sure exactly where but those are those are the images from from the show or at least from the book um, and I mean it, it's a really rough texture we're gonna we're gonna redo it and try and make it uh, clean it up a bit because it's not it doesn't look good right now but that is you know what it what it was well compared to and, what's on holodeck right now like yeah in, well, <laughs> in the video, when you're in FOV 20, you can actually read the text that's on there. Right. Yeah. Well, of course, we want that to be, be the case. Absolutely. The, 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 you know, the Klingon is, is gibberish, and I'm sure the Cardassian and the Vulcan and everything else is too. Um, but the English should should at least be legible. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just love So how, you were saying that uh, you had, uh, there's a few people involved in all of this. How many people mm -hmm. are, like, hands on deck with this right now? Uh, well, so four environment artists. It's me and uh, my my boss is Scott uh, Scott Boyd. Mm. Uh, he did a bunch of work in um, the the security office here. I had roughed it in, and then he finished off uh, a bunch of the parts in the desk and the chair and that back panel and a few other things. Um, and then uh, Donnie Versaja is uh, another environment environment artist, and he did the temple. Uh, basically soup to nuts in, in the temple 
And then uh, David Lopez, who has done some work in Quarks and maybe someplace else that I can't remember now. It's kind of a blur. A blur, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I just remember starting off the featured episode and beaming in here. I'm like, holy. <laughs> like, wow. And then and then I looked out and I saw out the window. I'm like, oh, and the door didn't open. I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah we did that. Oh, man, that was, uh, that was a tough sell. Um, they, when we were doing the Renegades Regret, um, we knew that it was going to be the last episode out before X4, or uh, uh, Victory's Life. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and we knew that, like, they wanted to, it to start on DS9, and so we were like, well, we can't show most of old DS9 if we're just going to do a new DS9, or, or actually, they wanted to put it in the security uh, office, but we didn't have a security office in the old DS9. And so we said, well, we could use the new one, and so I pushed pretty hard to have uh, a little section of the promenade out there just as a tease, so people could kind of kind of see it before uh, before it actually went out. And uh, we managed to pull it off. I I think it, it was maybe a little foolish to do it, but I I think it was fun to, to be able to pull it off. No, nope, nobody was people. upset that I went and did demo record stuff, are they? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I thought about I, that I, after nope. a fact. I'm like, uh, I'm like, well. So, if they David, didn't want David it to be seen, yeah, David freaked out. He 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 goes through Reddit too, and he freaks out once in a while when somebody does something like that. But it's not a problem. It's, <laughs> it's... Uh, one thing that I was actually really excited about, because um, when I was doing the demo record, I one of the questions I had was, "Are we going to be able to run up these stairs?" And I came sort on of. here yesterday, and the answer is sort of. <laughs> actually, I'm able to do it a lot better than Mike. <laughs> Yeah, because um, I rewatched the stream from yesterday just to take some of yeah. my own personal notes and. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Hello. Uh, that that staircase was mined. Um, yeah. The problem is that everybody runs straight at the pole for some reason, and that's the vertical part. And even the steps right next to that are almost vertical, so you have to aim for the outside, and then it'll then it'll run. Oh, I didn't get it that time. <laughs> there. I know go. it's tricky. But that's why we also put in. Um, there's a, a button that pops up in the in the lower right when you're at the top or the bottom of it, and you can just click to go if you don't want to run it. So yeah. So uh, the other, well, everything on here is a big change, but I think the other really big change is quarks. Um, yeah. Two things that are really big about it. One, <laughs> it's incorporated with this instance. It's not a separate map transfer anymore. Um, yeah. How how much work was that to make it all one? I mean, there, quarks was a lot of work. Period. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it was any harder to incorporate, and honestly, I'm not even sure why it wasn't incorporated in the old map. There, it's. I think that they just did that to cut down on draw calls and and how much you could see. Like, there's really there was no reason that it couldn't fit in the middle of DS9 in the old map. So I really, I'm not sure what the decision made on that was. Um, for this, hooking it up to the promenade really wasn't hard. There were a lot other harder elements within Quarks than, than getting it hooked up out here. So um, yeah, it wasn't a big deal. And I'm gonna use the, the door <laughs> like, a, like a human being. Like a civilized person. Yes, yeah. not, not yeah. jump through the windows like a savage. <laughs> don't worry we've blocked those off in, in the future so yeah yeah I, I i heard that note and it makes sense <laughs> um but so um in holodeck right now there's the crazy bloom that comes from the bar uh, uh -huh. in lighting 2.0 is there something you had to do different that it's not like over glaring I... now no, I, I'd have to go back and look at the other map. I mean, honestly, we, we weren't even looking at the old DS9 map when we made this. Uh, we were just looking at, at the show, really. And and then, you know, schematics and, and blueprints and whatever else we could find uh, of the actual show. So I don't know what's going on with old quarks. Um, I think the values were probably just set too high. And so I don't know what we did differently. We just set the values to the value that looked right you know yeah look it looks phenomenal now like this cool like i feel like i am in uh oh my god no way i just heard you, the 
Did you not catch that before? No, because... Oh, yeah. So for... Uh, I can't remember why I had my audio turned down. It, it was for some <laughs> silly reason. Um, but then I was watching the stream, and you're like, oh, yeah, I got it playing all the time, but that might change. So while you yeah. were talking and we were sitting up at the Jake and Nog spot, I turned it up, and I just heard it. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yep. It'll play every, I don't know, minute or two now. I want it to be more like every uh 15 minutes or something you know something so that it's it's more like an easter egg rather than just being obnoxious is there any um, way you can get it to play in uh, I can't. in the office in ops <laughs> <laughs> uh we could do that i don't think i don't think curlin would be happy with that but we could no, that's fine. um that's what curlin gets to, for dabbing on us <laughs> on this uh on this these screens here that have the little quirks there it is Oh my god! <laughs> so on these screens, I want to, and I, it's all going to come down to whether I have time to do it or not. Um, make a little uh, animated screen of the double wheel and the Quarks logo spinning, because that was his favorite part. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to have that play when when the audio is playing, and then switch back to this when it's not. Um, but we'll see how how time allows for that or not. Yeah, that that's. Oh man, dude, I am. You have no idea how like excited I am for. Oh, we we were very, very excited to think about adding that and to you know to to pull the audio and um, it was actually inserted into one of the missions that you guys will play later uh, before it was even put in here on the on the the social map. But um, but yeah, I'm glad that we have it. Yeah, it it for me it's all those all those little things that just. Uh... That yeah. just really tie everything in together. Like, I just... Well, it, you know, we're all Star Trek fans, right? So we're all pulling from the same things, and we're all nerding out about the same bits. And so, you know, the things that make you guys excited also make us excited. It's just a matter of whether we have time to pull them off or not, so... Yeah. Now, you guys... So this was originally being worked on around the Iconian time, correct? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Iconian got a little bit overwhelming and you guys had to pull away from this and work on like the midnight mission and all that, correct? Yeah. Yep. So um, uh this had actually started I, I had been so intent on rebuilding DS9 uh and had had little success in convincing anyone else that we should do it. Uh but I had started uh off just making a white box. So I, I had started modeling this all at home. I'd taken um you know, probably a thousand screenshots at home and started modeling the white box version of this, which you could have probably saw in the blog. There was a few white box shots in there. Yeah. Um, and I had just been working on the promenade ring itself, the up, upstairs and downstairs and kind of the layout of things. Um, and I'd gotten, you know, I don't know, probably halfway through the white box when it became a reality that we were going to do this. So, okay, cool. Well, I've already actually started that, so I can save us a little bit of time. And um, so then we, you know, I started working for real on on work hours uh, on rebuilding the or on continuing to build the white box for DS9. And we literally did that for two weeks. And then, oh, never mind. Uh, Midnight actually needs some help to before it can go out the door. Uh, and so we don't have time to do this right now. So you need to go work on that. And. <laughs> DS9 is on hold, question mark, indefinitely, question mark. So um, that was a bit of a gut punch, but uh, but I'm glad that, you know, we were able to, to flesh out Midnight to the point that it was as successful as it was. Yeah. Um, and, and so that was, and what was funny about that too is and that was right after an STLV. And so uh, Gecko had actually talked about like, oh yeah, we're starting to work on DS9. Uh, right at STLV, and then it was like the week after we got back or something that they're like, oh, never mind. So not only did it get pulled out from under us, but it got pulled out from under you guys because you guys had heard that we work started working on it too. And so never mind, we weren't actually working on it anymore. Yeah. And well, so that was a, that was three years ago now, I think. And and so we've actually, you know, now started this again, and we picked up with the white box where we left off. Um, I don't know, probably a couple months ago. I've totally lost track of time now. Yeah, oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this this is honestly amazing. Like, you guys have... Everything that's been coming out um, 
And I'm I'm looking specifically at art stuff because that's what we're talking about. But art stuff that's been coming out, like whether it be systems, bridge interiors, uh, now DS9 has just been on point. And that's, that is something that I see echoed in the community. Just the art team is just nailing everything that's coming out. So thank you very much. Like we, kudos we to you guys. Certainly try to try to uh, make everything as good as we can. So, um, I did have, uh, Oh, I, I saw, I had this question written down and I saw it pop up in my chat. Uh, will the external model get touched up like the internal has? Probably not. Uh, we don't have any time for yeah. that uh, scheduled, and so uh, we, we, but yeah. So basically, no. Yeah, <laughs> is the answer. It, I would love to, um, but it's not as critical as the interior was. The you know the exterior is at least you know pretty passable. Um, it's certainly missing some details and could be better, but um, but it's not terrible. Uh, and so the interior and specifically the promenade was was really the the goal right now. Um, ops is probably next on our list and we would really like to get that done in time for launch. Um, I don't know that it will be, I'm not sure what it'll even be done at all, but we're going to try. Uh, and, and yeah, so the promenade is the, the priority right now and ops would be second and then maybe, maybe the exterior. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it. I can, I can understand why promenade would be the, the um number one priority right now because it is the social zone like yeah. out the exterior you're only out there for maybe some some screenshots and maybe some interactions for uh missions whether it be transport mm -hmm. this person here but the if you're coming to ds9 the majority of time is uh you're coming through the promenade to end up at quirks whether it be the role play or whatever or do your daily stuff and i yeah. i can totally understand why Ops would be secondary, and Promenade is like, hey, everybody, drop what you're doing. We need to get this done now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and... I just figure we should probably go elsewhere. <laughs> What's that? Or I said I figure we should probably check out other parts of the station rather than just stand around in Quarks, but I don't know. Quarks, Quarks is amazing. These these little stores. So after I patched yesterday, which was a really big patch, I was going through all these stores, and yeah. I don't know how I had missed uh, the medical bay there, but. These oh, stores yeah. <laughs> were, uh, these were amazing. This was something that you were working on recently, if I understand. This was literally, yeah, two days ago or something that we were throwing these together. So, um, and mostly using assets that we already have, but you know, from elsewhere on the station and from elsewhere in the game, even. Um, but we tried to make sure that everybody got dressed up. The you know, we we couldn't use all of the set dressing from their old spots on DS9 because you know the the small crate that we had in old DS9 was bigger than them and would barely fit in this room. So uh, we had to use some some smaller assets and some new stuff to, to try and dress them up. Oh, they're so not great, but they're at least something for now. And if we have time, we'll, we'll dress them up a little bit more later. Somebody wants to see Garrick's shop. Oh, sure. Um, one thing in this shop that I found amazing was this. <laughs> the curtains. This... Uh, how hard is it to do the curtains like this? Um, they're not that bad. Uh -huh. uh, we, we've had cloth in the game for a while. We've used them for banners and stuff, um, going back to at least the Dyson Sphere and maybe before. Yeah, I remember um, in Dyson Sphere, the flags, and I looked at the motion. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that's really yeah. cool. It's not. It doesn't look like cardboard. It's actually flowing. Yeah. It's the same It's the same stuff. So it's not hard to set up. It just takes a little bit of time and, and needs to be something that, you know, doesn't need to have collision and and it's you know basically just fluff essentially so yeah somebody was asking if they can have the curtains to be tailor triggers but i'm guessing this person here is so uh, yeah um monique is the tailor but uh i can probably just put a volume over the whole room the same way that we did in the esd i think we just set the whole room to be the tailor oh, yeah. uh, which probably makes more sense um, like i said there's just so many little things to, to do so yeah, this this room's really cool. Everything is really cool. Like, there's and it was really like I, I there's a lot more dressing, not dressing, uh, like set dressing stuff that that Garrick had in his shop, but it, we just don't have time to make all of the racks of clothes and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, we made the table which was used in the shop, um, and we made this floor which was his, and uh, and then the the alcoves, these alcoves for the for the mannequins. Uh, which he had had. He had he had different mannequins, but 
I don't think it's a big deal. We can we can use whatever we've got. Yeah, I'm sure the mannequins would have been changed out after 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, and I know you're probably uh, you've probably answered this question so many times, but um, there's the question about. Um, Will the DS9 changes affect all DS9 missions? And I already know the answer, but if you want to go ahead and uh, TLDR <laughs> that an- one. The answer is no. Uh, essentially, uh, this is we're treating this much like we did with uh, the, the ESD revamp, where uh, old ESD missions will, or old DS9 missions will still use the old DS9 maps. And um, this, uh, this map will be updated, and um, some of the new missions that involve ds9 will use this map and so future missions involving ds9 will probably use this map but the old ones won't um we may update those at some point in the future but there's no plan right now to do so uh and that'd be that'd be a lot of work for something like boldly they road because there was so much yeah um you know turned over and and holes blasted and things and also um this map is so much smaller it's we actually tried doing some combat tests on it and it just it doesn't work very well for combat, so yeah, I can um, see we won't it. be able to do combat E missions in this map. I could, very well. I could see NPCs that are in like combat mode, like getting stuck in some things, or like on the stairs, they end up running up the stairs, and you can't. I mean, hit that's or... one problem, but also it's so small that you literally cannot walk without aggroing whatever is in front of you. Like, mm. there's nowhere to go to hide or to get out of the way of something. We had. Um, cloak gem hadar on the upper floor and like there's no you, there's nowhere you can walk where they wouldn't just start shooting at you from up there and jump over the railing and all that so um, <laughs> it's just it's just kind of a mess for combat oh klingon deli that's actually one guy oh, i missed that's yesterday back that's back this way no this this just this feels like ds9 i just i can't get over it do you uh do you watch shield of tomorrow at all uh, here and there when I can. Um, okay. It's hard to watch because when they start airing, it's like bedtime for me. Okay. Well, uh, there's a little Easter egg in the little purple yeah. uh, bubble. I saw Eric kind of losing his shit <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in that's, excitement. That's his character. Oh, we, we that's We made him right. the, new, the new negotiated a deal guy. And I forget the old guy's name, but the old guy is in the holding cells now. So he was arrested, and Zazret now has taken over his spot. Uh, <laughs> doing shady deals in the in the corner that's all yeah eric was i saw him on facebook and he's just like did you guys seriously do this oh my god I'm like, oh there he so is here's our here's our klingon deli he's dancing right now we're hoping that we will be able to get weston to do the concertina emote so he can actually like play his little concertina but uh but if not he'll at least serve you gach and whatever else uh out of here so that's that's awesome you, can buy, you buy some klingon food for energy credits I mean, it's not like anybody is going to, but, you know, he was supposed to be here, and so... The option is, is there if you want to. Yes. This is awesome. Um. Oh, with the docks. Okay, so if, if you're late to the stream and you haven't been to Tribble, there's a cool thing that when you get up to Deep Space Nine, you can either beam to the station or you can dock to the station. And when you dock you actually spawn in between these two doors, correct? I think that's where you spawn right now, but I'll probably move it back here. Uh, we we re- redid what was back here, this whole antechamber, um, because we needed to make it more narrow to make room for Garrick's, actually, for the for the changing rooms. Oh, really? And so we had to narrow that down what was back here and elongate it a bit. So I'll probably move the, the start spawn to back here by the turbo lift. And then players have suggested putting a volume in here that lets you... Um, uh, go to your ship without beaming. I don't know if I can pull that off or not, but I can at least pull off a, the, the standard rip cord that will let you beam out from from that spot, which would be better than nothing. So yeah. Otherwise, these really serve no purpose other than they're just being something back here. So we need to have um, our so probably, version. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll probably put the the volume or the start spawn back there, and then a couple of people are talking about these doors need to move faster. In the show, they moved really slow, but it's really obnoxious when you're trying to run someplace. So I'll, I might, I might speed them up for the sake of gameplay. See, um, I actually didn't think that was, I didn't think the speed was an issue at all. Like, okay, well maybe I'll. That's even, me. I don't know. That's me we'll personally. Um, I, yeah. I don't speak for the community. I just do <laughs> videos and crap like that. But I, I thought, I personally thought like I'm walking up and, yeah. yeah, like you get caught on the door maybe a little bit, but at least I. For me, they don't move as slow, 
and as in the TV show, and again, well, certainly, I, yeah. They certainly I, move faster than they did in the TV show. And Those we, were real stuff. you could chalk the speed up to, hey, this is 30 years later. They've probably uh, gotten <laughs> around to putting some quicker gears in there and redoing yeah. the grease. And so uh, now this, I didn't even notice this last night when I was walking and when I was rewatching the stream last night. So this was an actual set piece that was in the show but was never really used at face, ba face value, right? This was the well, transporter pad? This was this room was here, so um, these doors were were visible, and this room was used a couple of times, but it was never used as the transporter. But on the stage plans, it's listed as the transporter, and on the um, the DS9 tech manual map, it's listed as the transporter. So we figured that we should just make it the transporter and call it good. So if you choose the beam in option from your ship, this is where you will beam in. Correct. That's awesome. Will this door do anything, or is it just... Uh... No, there's a lot of a lot of dead-end doors around just to make it look like there's more to the station, and some of them are foundry doors, and some of them aren't, and maybe we'll expand them, you know, in the future, but right now they're they're just dead-end doors. Yeah. They're, well, they're kind of all over the place. And also takes away from it just being like a flat blank wall, right? Right. Uh, and then, oh, I love this. I love this room. I thought this was really the cool. The shipyard? Yeah. I love how compact it is. Okay, good. We were worried that it was going to be too small, but I think it'll be okay once, once, as long as there aren't, you know, fifty people trying to cram their yeah. their selves in here. So, well, it, that was uh, that was another question I had. So, before the player limit on each map on DS Nine was twenty or twenty five, I think. Is that still I, the same? I don't know offhand. Oh. Um, I thought I think somebody I read somebody saying that it used to be thirty and now it's twenty. Um, I don't know offhand that's a design call, but I will talk to them about upping it because I, I think it can certainly handle 30 people here yeah. uh, without issue. Not in this room, but on the map, I mean, in general. Um, and I think that, you know, the more people we can have on one map, the, the more fun it is. It just uh, is a matter of performance. Um, once you add more people, it drives down performance as well. So if you maintain performance, then, then we'll probably up the limit a little bit. Uh, actually, somebody is saying that DS9 caps at 30 on holodeck currently. Right. All right. So, and then the exchange is right across the way. And again, I think this is like, I like this layout. It's simple. Everything is close by. Um, I always thought that it was, so the old way where you run down the giant ramp, turn right, mm -hmm. and then on your right was the exchange. Then you had to get to the bank and inventory. You had to go to the other side of the room, up the stairs. Mm -hmm. I like how everything is really close together and I mean that's really just a matter of we we wanted to keep using the same size room that they used over and over again. You'll see that this this octagon elongated octagon room is used for everything. So this is this room, this is the shipyard, this is Garrick's, this is uh, or was the schoolhouse, it was the assay office, it was uh, it's the holding cells, um, it's the Jem'Hadar office and probably other things that I'm not even thinking of right now. So they use this room a lot. And so we wanted to continue that in order to make it kind of all feel uh, like one place and feel like it fits rather than making some giant room. Um, and on ESD, we had put the bank and the exchange, you know, essentially right next to each other. They were in a little bit bigger room, but not by a lot. And so we wanted to do something similar here. I like it. I like it a lot. And the ma ma there is a mail... Uh, spot right out here by the by the repl mat, so not far from mail. And there's three of these located uh, roughly one third increments around the the uh, promenade on the on the inside. So yeah. Oh, there was one thing I forgot to mention when we were in Quarks, but you can double click into the chairs now. You couldn't do that before. Oh yeah. That, yep, that's true here too. Like all the chairs, you can double click into. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember in Quarks, you had to kind of stand up on it, slash EM emote yeah. sit chair. But now you that's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we should we shouldn't do that. We should let people sit down on things. So we're we're doing that. There's a couple of these that like this one is having issues. Um, I actually just moved its its uh, spawn point uh, over a little bit because it's in the pole right now. So it won't oh, actually yeah. let me click on it. But there's things to fix. But um, I think overall it'll be much better to sit on things. And we'll there. I know that there's a lot of uh, NPCs that are standing on their chairs right now. The the plan is to do. Uh, like a chair uh, animation for them that ha that includes the chair, so we can just get rid of the chair, and then they will be sitting in the right spot. So um, we'll see how that works out, but that's that's the hope at the moment. 
Yeah. And uh, R.I.P. the Omega Room, eh? Yeah. Yep, that's gone. I know people really care about Commander Roxy, so we'll try to find a spot for her. Yeah. Um, I know people also want to have a boff trainer, so maybe we'll make her the boff trainer and put her up in ops. I'm not sure yet, but um, but yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. Is there any and, uh, cool Easter eggs you'd want to... Sh- oh, is there anything going to happen with this little thing? No, no, no plans anyway. This is... I, I call it the ticket booth. Um, this was season one, so there's a bunch of... Uh, not a bunch of stuff. There's a few things that we they did a big change in the set from season one to season two and a little bit further into season two mm-hmm. on ds9 and so um things like the jump just stand and this ticket booth were in season one and then never existed again on ds9 and when we're filling out the rest of the the circle uh, we need things to to put in these places and so i figured that we should pull some of the stuff that they had in season one so that you can still see it, so it's still it's still part of the promenade, right? It just wasn't part of the the main section that you saw all the time. So we put this in here. The jump just stand is down the row a little bit. Um, there's a few other things. Club Martis's door is now the Gemadar entrance. Um, that kind of stuff. Oops. So this this was the entrance to Club Martis, which was the competitor with quarks oh right um, right just just the doorway um we got rid of the little the little flashy lights because it's probably not not so geminari to to have that but um but the doorway is the same and then uh the jumja stand over here who will sell you jumja and nothing else yes i'm gonna buy some, <laughs> I'm gonna buy some jumja right now we'll make a make a little stand here for some jumja sticks so you can see it uh, the way they had it on the show. They still have to finish off a few things with this uh, stand. So, yeah, t- uh, like right now to the naked eye, it almost looked like this almost looks complete, but there's still quite a bit for yeah. you to do behind the scenes. Eh? Yeah. And like I said, it's just the, the, there's a ton of little things. Um, we often talk about there, like the last 10% takes 90, 90% of the effort. There's always, when you get down to all of the little things, like if you've ever moved houses oh, um yeah. you know moving is a pain pain in the butt right <laughs> i've moved you, 16 times in my life right, yeah right okay so you move so you you move and it's a pain but like you get all of your furniture out you get the big stuff out and like technically like even if it was hard to move that stuff that was easy because once all that stuff is out you see all of the little things that are everywhere that you still have to deal with yeah and that's where we're at right now is finding all of those little things and trying to to sort them all out and put them in the right boxes and and just you know, GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's actually like when I do my videos. That's uh, it's the last things like putting the text at the end and your credits and that. That's the part I'm just like, oh my god, I just want to get this done. Like I love yeah. the editing process. Right. And, uh, and I, this is. Don't get me wrong. I've had a ton of fun. This is a great thing. But man, I'm ready for this to be done and be good. Yeah, be done, and get yeah. out there. It's yeah. uh, and I'm no way trying to compare my videos to what no, magic you, you you've worked here. That's that. That's only a day's worth of work here. We're looking at two months at least of work. Yeah, more than that, probably. This is amazing, and it's coming up on uh, an hour. Um, okay. I'm gonna let you get back to work because I know you have a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> um, right. Any anything you want well, to say to the people watching? Uh, no. Thank you guys very much for playing. I'm I'm so excited that you can finally see this. That we can finally talk about it. Um, you know, keep giving me suggestions. I know I can't always act on all of them, but uh, but I appreciate that you guys are interested and in, and you know have ideas for things. So so thank you. Yeah, the the hype for this is definitely insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, somebody somebody just said you should put you should hide Odo's bucket somewhere and get an accolade for finding it. <laughs> I agree that I should hide it someplace. I'm not quite sure where. That would be the security office is the obvious place, but then he doesn't, he's not in there anymore, and yeah, he's not even on DS9 anymore, so it kind of doesn't make sense. But I don't know, we'll you see. know, what? I could, I could see Quark maybe holding on to it for yeah, sentimental reasons. Actually, we could, yeah, we could put it behind the bar, it would look like any of the other, uh, you know, uh, containers that are back there. That's like, that's an interesting idea, yeah, think about that. Hmm. So, uh, and uh, yes, yeah, some. Somebody's asking about future content, which uh, I'm going to echo 
uh, mic we don't talk about. <laughs> and somebody said... Uh, there uh, are some episodes coming, and uh, yeah, that's about all I can say. Uh, to Nick, you totally deserve that summer vacation after Victory is Life releases. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I think we'll, we still have more stuff planned after this, so uh, the train never stops. Yeah. So, uh, no, thank you again for uh, taking thank time you. out of your day. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to have done it, and I'm I'm glad that you're interested, and it's nice to finally talk to you. Yes, no, <laughs> it definitely, well, we've talked, and I am, well, but yeah, it's nice to hear each other's voice is, uh, right. is uh, definitely fun, and I, I, I know this would probably go on for a couple more hours with us talking back and forth about, like, you and I could probably geek out about stuff all night. <laughs> probably. Yeah, but uh, yes, thank you again for no uh, coming on. Thanks and, for having me over. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait for this to hit holodeck. Yeah, you and me both, man. Yeah. So, all right, <laughs> everybody in the right. stream, we're going to end it here. Uh, thank you for coming to uh, watch. And, uh, Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, taking a tour of DS9, even though you might have seen it last night with uh, Admiral Kale. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I hope I was able to ask some questions that were missed yesterday. And, uh, and you got to know Nick a little bit more, too, as a person yeah. and not just a person who develops all day, which is, well, just forgetting the past couple of months yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, that's the end of the stream thank you very much everyone uh if you missed this this will be on youtube probably by tomorrow so you can rewatch it uh thank you have a good night bye-bye thanks guys